We're here in Orlando, Florida with Advent Health and the Flight One program. My name's Brent Hallman. Join me as we visit their operation and go flying across this great state in their Airbus helicopters. This story begins in the year when Back to the Future reigned supreme at the box office. Microsoft just released Windows 1.0 and Coca-Cola introduced New Coke to the delight of, well, some people. That year was 1985 and Florida Hospital inaugurated Faith Flight 1 to serve the Orlando area with an air ambulance. To do this, Faith Flight 1 selected the iconic Sikorsky S58T as their first helicopter. The S58T was a beast of a machine. It was big, it was heavy, and boy, it was noisy. Today, the program is known as Flight One and is part of Advent Health Orlando. Advent Health owns the helicopters of Flight One, but to run the program effectively, they are partnered with Metro Aviation. Metro Aviation is a vendor that supplies all of the experienced pilots and mechanics that are essential to make the helicopters fly. The machines behind Flight One's continued success are a pair of twin-engine Airbus EC-145 helicopters. A popular choice for both pilots and operators, the EC-145 is well known for its performance, reliability, and cabin space. I asked Contessa Graybert of Flight One RN to show me around one of their birds. So Contessa, we are in front of Flight One's, one of Flight One's aircraft here. Can you tell us, what is it? So this is a Eurocopter 145, EC-145 for short. The call sign for this helicopter is Archangel 1. And um, it's a twin engine helicopter. And this is uh, one of our primary uh, ships that we use to transport our patients all around the state of Florida and it's a wonderful office space for us to take care of our patients. We have extra room in the back um, for the equipment that we need. We take care of patients on a lot of um, cardiopulmonary assist devices, and so we have plenty of room to safely um, secure all of the equipment that we need for our patients. So Contessa, an interesting thing with the 145, the patients don't actually get loaded from the side, they get loaded from the back, right? Yeah, let me show you exactly how that is done. Oh wow. So here we are, yeah. And how does it, does the gurney just slide right out? Exactly, so it just slides right out like that and um, me and my partner, we will safely unload our patient um, and then locks back in and we can um, transport patients up to 500 pounds wow. on this stretcher sh system that we have here. So this setup is very similar to what a ground tra transport ambulance would be like then, right? Yes, it is very similar. We use a lot of the exact same equipment. Um, we have a little bit less space uh, to operate in the back here. Um, but we try to be smart about uh, where we use our equipment and um, our safety is always paramount. So whatever we bring on board, we have to make sure that we can safely secure that so that we can keep ourselves and our patients safe. Flight One averages more than 1,000 patient transfers per year, and these patients vary in the kinds of treatment they require. As one of only a handful of operators in the United States to staff both flight nurses and respiratory therapists on every flight, Flight One continues to raise the bar in patient care. I spoke with John Inkerot and RRT to talk more about how they serve their patients. So we are the managers of the airway and we are the experts in mechanical ventilation. So patients that are on life support, patients that need airway control, uh, we're the experts in that field. So uh, we utilize us on this helicopter because we bring the ICU to the patient. We're not a scene-based program, we're an inter-facility program. When a patient leaves the hospital, and they're in transit to go to the next facility, how long would they typically be in the back with you here? So average is 20 to 30 minutes, but we go as far as Miami, which is an hour and 45, Tallahassee, which is two hours. Uh, so we do have a range, but it's average 20 to 30 minutes. 
And I noticed as well on our flights that you're not just riding in the back, you are a legitimate part of the flight crew and you do have responsibilities outside of the aircraft. Can you talk about yeah, what you're checking, what your role is? Sure. <clears throat> Anytime before a flight, we will always do a walk around, not just one of us, but the entire crew. What we're looking for is any sort of leaks, any sort of fluids, any sort of smells that aren't normal that we're not used to, uh, making sure that all of our doors are closed, that our latches on the cowlings are closed, that there's nothing that was left undone mistakenly uh, by our mechanics or by our pilots or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. uh, when we go to a call to another hospital, I will sit up front and have communications with the dispatch while the pilot deals with air traffic control. You, added, you missed one thing too. I saw that you do come and you pump the gas. We do. Now and then. <clears throat> so that's uh, just in the past uh, year or so. Um, all the startups and shutdowns that a helicopter has can tend to wear on the engines and the battery life and stuff. So we try to hot fuel. Mm -hmm. So we have been taught and checked off on that by our pilots and given the okay by our vendor. So we do hot fuel when we have no patient on board. Flight One has touched the lives of countless people in the state of Florida. If you have anything to share about this great program, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with us in the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. And if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and share. Orlando is home to one of the busiest airspaces in the United States. It is filled with commercial flights, tour operators, general aviation, police units, and medevacs. Pilots really need to be on top of their game when flying here. Lead pilot, Jens Janis, gave me more insight on what it's like to fly in this booming airspace. Yeah, Central Florida is known for the capital of flight schools. You know, the Florida has VFR or good flying conditions almost around a year. That's really attractive for one of the largest flight schools and they're all over the place in Florida. In Orlando, Sanford, you name it. So that adds to all your list. You mentioned actually a lot of uh, aircrafts in the air. You know, we have days we're calling actually an uh, aluminum overcast. And as a pilot, what's it like to fly the uh, the 145 here? Well, the 145 is uh, the, the upper end of a light utility helicopter category. Right. So the load capacity of that aircraft suits really well for the profile of Advent Health with ECMO flights, with a lot of uh, equipment, which smaller ones wouldn't be able to handle, especially in Florida, because we have to um, deal with a lot of heat in the summer and high humidity. That's a combination which uh, decreases performance of aircraft. So we still have a good load of fuel. We have a range of an hour and a half up to two hours with an average patient weight. And that's what the EC-145 is capable of. Okay, great. And what special equipment do you have in the cockpit to help you with your flying duties? Um, that's what I appreciate so much in our profession. Uh, in the EMS sector, we're well, we're flying well-equipped aircraft. They have to meet certain standards, but with uh, we have traffic um, avoidance. Uh, we have uh, symbols on the screen where we can see other traffic. We have a weather radar equipped, so we actually can see. Um, precipitation, thunderstorms. Um, we have a uh, radar altimeter, a very precise reading of our altitude we fly. And uh, for night operations, uh, very common or standard now in EMS uh, are night vision goggles. So how does Flight One know where to go and when to get there? The answer is mission control. Now this place is impressive. Sprawling across a 12,000 square foot facility, it was the largest medical mission control in the United States when it opened in 2019. It serves three counties, 19 emergency departments across nine hospitals, and tracks up to 2,600 patients per day. And by utilizing a combination of real-time data and artificial intelligence, mission control is able to predict fluctuations in patient volumes to allow for capacity adjustments. This all allows Advent Health to deliver the best possible patient care while dealing with an ever-growing population demand. From our time spent with the Flight One team, it was evident that these professionals are really passionate about their jobs. Every day matters to them, and more importantly, every day matters to the patients they serve. I absolutely love coming to work. I think all of us say this is you know, our dream job, and, and we love the environment. We, um, personally, I can say I love the challenges that it brings. You know, it's really that thinking out of the box situation. Sometimes we have really challenging situations and we want to always deliver the best patient care that we can. 
um, but safety being paramount, patient safety paramount, um, and then the safety of, of us and our pilots and everybody getting to go home to their family at the end of the day. And with that, our time with Flight One came to an end. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, subscribe, or share. And for all things helicopter, please visit verticalmeg.com or find Vertical on all the major social media platforms. Thanks for watching.